The, your operational occupancy is pretty much set in stone or it's it's locked in a year in advance. I live for almost 20 years, so we know exactly the market. A room, they can sell like very high prices and that can be like almost double what I initially proposed for the projection. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another podcast with GeoNet Properties and Finance. Today is a very, very different uh, podcast. We've actually got a property management company, and I just want to sort of throw a little bit of a curveball at you. Maybe let, let's, let's have a little think on this. Who would the a core group be, or who would, be, who would the IHG group be, or who would Wyndham be if they had 17 cruise ships? if they had over 400 hotels, or if they had 154 planes, for example, aeroplanes, they had their own airlines, for example. I wonder who that company would be if they had all of that, or if they were actually managing two, uh, 27 million travel and, uh, travelers and tourists every year. I wonder what that company would look like. I'll give you the answer. It's the TUI group. The TUI group are that big. And right now we've actually got the regional manager for uh, the Asia, Southeast Asian uh, region, Mr. Andrew Edgar with us. And I've, I know, it's a very, very uh, interesting time for us to have this podcast simply because this is now, we, we met each other over in November. November last year, yeah. November last year. Um, and the beauty of that was we started to see the relationship happen between yourselves and Bali Ria International. And we're obviously, we're at the Luke, the Luke here in Barawa. But welcome back. Thank it, you. It's not like you haven't been here since November. You've been coming back all the time. Oh, every month. <laughs> explain to us, explain to us now that we're getting ready for opening in December, explain to uh, our investors and obviously everybody that's now uh, tuning in and, and, and everybody, explain to us what your role is. My role? Yeah. So basically, I have a privilege of uh, introducing this project to our owner, Pa Anton and Indu Valen. Uh, I bring the brand of Tui Blue. My role here is a regional business development director for Southeast Asia and Japan, actually. So, uh, Southeast Asia, I'm handling right now uh, four countries, wow. which is uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, and Singapore, and Japan. So, totally, it's uh, five countries. And you're based out of Jakarta? I'm based in Jakarta right now, but always go around. Yeah. Yes. You meet me often, right? I meet, you, I meet you often, and I'm enjoying it more and more and more, especially as I see your group take ownership of this particular project. Yeah. Tell me what that every every month or every other week you're coming down here now with your team. Tell us about the discussions and about the actual execution leading up to a hotel grand opening. Mm. What happens? Okay, at first, uh, when we sign the management contract, we see what stage of de development that the project is currently in. Yeah, and in this case, the look. The uh, the project we call it a brownfield, so it's already been built. There's a initial design basically. Yeah. So we do a technical service advisory for the owner, and uh, basically we have a team of our architect, uh, mechanical, electrical, and interior to review all the design mm. forward for the property to become to bring the property up to our Tuibul standard. Basically. Yeah. As you know, we have a uh, hundred and eight hotels right now all over the world in Tui Blue. In Tui Blue, just Only, Tui, just yeah, Tui Blue Blue Red, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, it comes with its own design and with its own electrical standards, and and obviously that's a very yeah. very high bar of quality assurance. Yeah. That's what your team are here now doing. Correct. We want to, as you know, because. Uh, uh, every property needs to be need to uh, the name need to be uh, uh, to become a Tui Blue. You you really need to up the specs to become a Tui Blue standard. Basically. Right. We do the fire safety, for example, uh, checks. So every, uh, we do all the even the interior checks to so make it when you enter into this property, you enter into Tui Blue 
mm. hotels basically. Yeah. And as you know, our customer base is uh, mostly t- around 27 million yeah. and mostly our Europeans actually. Yeah. We control uh, most of our customers are in German speaking countries. Mm-hmm. And also we do uh, Dutch and Belgium, we do UK and Ireland. So total we, uh, and Scandinavians, mm. obviously. So total actually we are handling around 50 source market in Europe. 50 source market. 50 source market. Meaning 50 particular regions. Not particularly difficult. They like different things. Yeah, they like different things. They have a, a, a different, uh, obviously a, a different region that they're coming from. Yeah. Uh, different holidays different holiday times, different travel habits. Exactly. That's all managed. Because you guys have got 16,000 tour and travel agencies. Yes, agencies. And that's our bread and butter, basically. That's the bread and butter that fuels all of the ecosystem within the TUI group. Yeah. Including all of those 400 hotels. Those How many TUI Blues now? Uh, total is 108 operating hotels. Wow. Wow. Operating hotels is interesting. We're, we're about to start operating this now. Can you tell me what your schedule is like before we get to December, the grand mm-hmm. opening? So basically, our TUI tour operator has already come here a couple of times. The tour operators are already here. Yeah. They, they've already scouted the joint. They, they know what market to target already. Right. Uh, they already uh, do their own market study. And the question is uh, for uh, for Pak Anton and Bufalen is always when exactly you, you can open. Mm. Uh, right? Because why why they ask this? Because they always sell the rooms one year in advance. Yeah, one year in advance. One year in advance. So, so your operational occupancy is pretty much set in stone, or it's it's locked in a year in advance. Yes, we know. Estimately, uh, on estimate, uh, how how many people are going to stay in the hotels because we sell it one year in advance. Yeah, and we do big package. For example, for summer, 24, for winter, 24. We do it. We we ask the property since December. So that's wow. why you always see uh, our tour operator coming, uh, visiting, asking, uh, negotiating with Pak Anton also. Yeah, And uh, yeah, I think that's one of our benefits so that we get a sense of the, uh, like a base occupancy. Yeah. Just filling in the hotel. Yeah. Then later, the rest of the market, we can always uh, do other channels, for example, like, like usual hotel. But at least you have the base. So you yeah. can yield the higher price, for example, in OTA, yeah. in other travel agents. So you do this good uh, revenue management. Re- revenue management. So revenue management comes to the core of our relationship with you as Geonet Properties and Finance Group and uh, obviously with our relationship with Pak Anthon and the Bali Ria International Development Group. Occupancy, look, we know the occupancy traditionally in this area and, and there's not so many years to go on, but you don't have a lot of five-star uh, co- um, competition here as well. And, and, and I, I want to bring you, here's a stat Here's a statistic, and I want to see what your face does in, in relation to that. There is a five-star hotel just maybe 1,200, 1,400 meters away. Mm. In that hotel, they have uh, apartments. Uh, they have one-bedroom and two-bedroom apartments. And those one-bedroom and two-bedroom apartments in a five-star luxury hotel, a uh, very, very nice one. It's actually, um, yeah, like I said, not too far away from here. Those prices start at $2,200 Australian dollars, which would probably be about $1,500 USD for the one bedroom oh, per night. Or failure. And then they go up to as high as $3,500 for a two-bedroom two bedroom apartment with penthouse. Mm. Okay. Do those prices scare you or do they welcome you do they make you mm. how do you justify those prices uh i think at the end of the day this area Brawa and changu is one of the hi- hypers area in bali that's for sure one of the high hypers i mean uh, a lot of hype uh, a lot of hyped up here yes yeah uh, one of them a lot of excitement here yeah and then there's also limitations on uh, how many hotel project you can do in the area i guess you know right uh so 
di situ belum berawa actually uh, have an advantage uh, they have a hotel license already mm-hmm. so they can promote this one already has the hotel license that's right. already locked in that's why you guys are here every week because right. it's time to have the game plan basically if I'm yeah. it yeah so uh, let's go back to it you said there's a lot of hype in this area you you can justify those prices because there is a, a limited amount of hotel opportunity in the area yeah. in the area yes yeah we, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> elaborate on that actually for myself before I uh, joined Twin Blue actually I I was in Ascot group yeah and the Nils in Brawa is one of my projects yes. and I thought that one is the last hotel actually yeah <laughs> so apparently because I know I heard uh, since that time 2017 There will be a moratorium on hotel in this area to preserve actually the the culture here. Right. right. So having a hotel project here is actually pretty distinct. Yeah. Not 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 easy. It's not easy. Not easy to develop a hotel here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Props to Pak Anton and yeah. Pak Anton. Yeah. No, they are very very special with the way they've done things. I, I, I want to speak a little bit to the villas. Villas. Okay. If we had Tui Blue experience in the villa, describe what that might be as a guest okay. in the villa. So uh, basically in the villa, uh, I think we'll cater to a lot of family market here, mm. uh, which is, uh, you can see many people also bring kids to Art Class Bridge Club, for example. Yeah. It's a family destination, popular for domestic as well. So the villa experience, definitely you can get a more private settings. Uh, when you enter into the hotel, you have the private Uh, pool you can also have a freedom uh uh you 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 have a uh, you have your own parking space as well so uh, dedicated parking space so usually people will appreciate that because you bring the family right yeah <laughs> and then you want to go around basically. yeah so uh aside from that i think villa will sell very well yeah Because uh, we only have 14 villas. It's only 14, that's Only 14 villas. And I see the demand. You see a lot of villa projects here in Jango. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're selling, selling through Airbnb. Right? Yeah. And people who think of Airbnb, they might scared about the security, for example. True. Because it's not hotel operator. That's it's, right. uh, it's individual owner, right? Yeah. But if you have hotel operator and you have the brand to support it, You have a sales of like uh, insurance, uh, like sales of a security. Yeah. Uh, that your stay will be managed well. Yeah. And you'll be safe. Yes. Also. So that's why I'm not afraid. I think 14 is not enough. 14 is not <laughs> enough, right? <laughs> to, to be honest, 14 is not enough. So I, I, I really want to get down to that. What is enough? Because the Tui Blue Hotel here, the Loop, Has 108 hotel rooms. It's got 14, 14 um, villas. Yeah. Now, when I did the math, that equates to 46,000 nights per year. For your health. Okay. Last year, you guys brought in 100,000 tourists. Just to Mali. Actually, 150,000. 150,000. Yeah, last year. 150,000 people coming to Bali through the Tui Blue group and through the Tui group themselves. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. But what does surprise me is that you don't have a hotel here yet, and obviously you're moving into one. But it's triple now, 46,000 nights, 150,000 travelers. What kind of occupancy are you looking at? So, uh, I, I mean, occupancy, we always... Uh, manage to be around 80 percent yeah hopefully not uh, 19 because sometimes we increase the rate you see yes so we do uh it's not the most important thing occupancy but we try to keep it above 80 percent yeah so that we can play around with the rates basically. right yeah for example you can trip double your rates but uh stable 80 percent occupancy obviously your revenue will, yeah uh, will be there so One of a way that uh, we can guarantee, uh, I mean, we can uh, play play around with that is to have a base of open team, uh, the, uh, the thing that I mentioned to you earlier. Yeah. Why? Because our customer, when they book like six months in advance, one year in advance, they already know where to go, basically. Yeah, you offer them the package. Tell me about these packages. This is so, so it, I, I can I can speak to the TUI group and the, and the TUI Blue experiences 
I've actually lived quite a lot of my life in Europe and I understand this brand. And this is back before the internet and everything. You used to get a catalog in your mailbox of about 300 pages. And that catalog would be all of the Tui Blue and all of the Tui Group experiences, all of the hotels, da 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 da. And you would look at it and it was just amazing. Just amazing. And it was a wonderland of an experience choosing where you want to go. It really was. Now that's converted through the digital age. People are Instagram heavy. Yeah. <laughs> obviously. Obviously. And that, but, but those travel agents used to deliver those to us. Now those travel agents live in this digital era. The packages blow my mind. Explain to me how how the booking process works when you're when you're engaging with a Tui Blue. Yeah. So basically, uh, in Tui Group, we never promote one hotel. We always promote the destination. So when you go to Bali, you don't. Uh, if you are you're from Europe, right? You're traveling like twenty hours. Twenty hours, right? To Bali, right? But you don't think of one hotel. You want to experience the destination. What to see in Bali? Correct. So that's why. Uh, we get our average length of stay probably can like two can be like two weeks, three weeks. If your average length of stay is two to three weeks per uh, per guest, but in different hotels, in different hotels, yeah. basically, yeah. So we, we arrange for them like, oh, uh, okay. First, you you will be in Changu. You uh, you want to experience a beach club, for example. Yeah. Uh, day one, what will you do, for example? And then day two, maybe activities inside the hotel that you can uh, collaborate with the existing commercial activities. activities. Yeah. And then day three, maybe you want to try another branch, yoga class, uh, inside or outside the resort that we already think, uh, we already know the vendors, basically. Yeah. Then, okay, for example, for four nights in Canggu, then after that, you want to go Nusa Dua, you want to go Ubud. We always think of that. So, yeah. Uh, that's why we know, that's how we also increase our average length of stay, which yes. is very important. Very important. Because if you uh, stay like two nights and then you feel like, oh, actually I haven't done this activities, I kind of miss it. I already traveled 20 hours to fly, yeah. very expensive, right? <laughs> so uh, I might as well add another day. Yeah, which is another ride for you. Yes, something like that. Fantastic. So, and, and for for me also, look, I I just have experience with the Tui Group. A lot of our Australian clients, our investors, they don't have that experience with the Tui Group. There's obviously plans to expand. You have seventy to ninety hotels in the pipeline that you're about to open throughout the Southeast Asian region, right? Yeah. This is very very special. Our Australian investors don't have that background of understanding the Tui Group and how that works. I urge you all to check them out on online, but also make sure that you understand when you're booking a holiday, and, and Australians do book holidays a year in advance, more like six months in advance, and then they come to Bali and they just go, "I'm just going to go to this place and I'll do a few to few um, uh, a few day tours, and and I'll just sit by the pool and do that." The art of travel and tourism the business behind travel and tourism, and the ecosystem that the TUI group have built really becomes life-changing. I will say, I will say that. It's a life-changer. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, it's, it's a different. You don't just walk into a hotel that's that, and that's it. Hey, we've checked into our hotel. Yeah. You book into the experience, and, and also there's an engagement during that particular right. booking length of time in that, that you continuously build on enriching your itinerary while you're here. Correct. Yeah. That's what Perfect. fascinates me with this group. <laughs> the The fact that they are now in Bali speaks volumes to, um, I, I guess you guys must be excited, right? Very excited. Very excited. It, speak to me about what you've uh, encountered in this lead up with the local tour operators and and getting yourselves in mm. firmer foot firmer firmer feet and firmer roots into this culture i see what what can we expect what 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 are those other experiences that are chewy blue branded i see um for doing group itself actually 
we've been in Bali for almost 20 years, so we know exactly the market. Our even our our staff mostly are local staff that knows the activities, know right. the culture. So uh, and we communicate. Our bigger office is actually in Thailand for for uh, for uh, Southeast Asia. We communicate uh, directly. So what we do? Uh, uh, oh, you you're asking about the Wimbo experience, right? Yeah, yeah. So basically, the Wimbo experience uh, is not. We don't want to you to just stay in a hotel, basically. After uh, we always have activities arranged for you, and we and the activities also divided by uh, uh, the age range. age group age group like uh, for children what kind of activities you can do for teens and adults what kind of activities you can do so we already include that as part of the marketing mm-hmm. and especially using a uh, tweet group as a front end to sell yeah uh, as a front end channel to sell all this uh, to promote our hotels as well yeah they already know exactly uh, what are we planning to have uh, inside the hotel. Mm. So when they stay in the hotel, oh, I can expect to have this activities, cooking class. Cooking classes, <laughs> yoga. Yeah, you can do a uh, face painting for the kids. Yes, <laughs> maybe uh, marshmallow, maybe. Okay. Uh, by, we have a fire pit right uh, above. So we, we can fire pit, that's right. Uh, we can also uh, do like yoga activities uh, and uh, surfing, surfing, surfing class, and also uh, excursions to beach club for some. Obviously, beach clubs they have to do the beach club. You, you, you can't mention the Luke without mentioning the beach club. The beach club <laughs> because we're literally on the doorstep of those. And, and of course, we've been there a few times together, and and uh, there's. Four and a half thousand people every day yeah. in those two beach clubs. Obviously, there's going to be an affinity or synergy between this hotel, the Tui Group, yeah. and those beach clubs. Speak to me. What's happened there? So, um, actually, uh, the two beach clubs also are asking us quite often when you will open, basically, because yeah. they. They need a hotel to stay and a proper hotel, basically. Yeah. Uh, as as we mentioned, uh, Brawa, uh, they have limited uh, supply of hotel. Yeah. You can have apartment, but not hotel. Yeah. Which is totally different fit out, different uh, experience, different uh, service as well. That's right. Mm-hmm. So uh, they they are, they are actually asking us uh, when we will open and then uh, to house their guests and maybe have special package with us. Yeah. But for now, we say. Maybe wait. So would would you would you perhaps or enlighten me? I'm I'm guessing from a marketing perspective in your own marketing through the Tui Group, are you featuring the Finns Club as the link? Yeah, at, at, yeah, obviously. You obviously, yeah. Okay. So we don't, uh, as I mentioned, we don't only promote the hotel, right? Yeah. So uh, of course, we try to prioritize the activities in February, good. Mm-hmm. But what is the surroundings activities mm-hmm. we we can learn also. We can we we can do also, so in that case is it become a whole ma- marketing package that we sell to our uh, customers because at the end of the day it's the sales people in the uh, one thousand eight eight hundred uh, travel agencies yep. that talk to the people. You should do this. You should do that, and recommend them to choose the package basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and there's also affinities or or um, can you say strategic partnerships with the Finns Recreation Center as well. That opens up a very interesting set of big activities, right? Yeah. For kids, for adults, there's tennis, there's water clubs, uh, there's um, fitness centers, there's wellness centers, there's salons in there, there is a, a football field there. <laughs> yeah. Very, very, very rare in this uh, on this little island to have a, a football field that is aligned with the hotel. Yeah, definitely. And also part of an exclusive experience as well. So, um, can you tell me what has your experience been watching this project now getting built? Are you happy with that? I think I'm very, very happy, very, very excited. Uh, a couple of uh, projects that come out in Changu and Brawa area when they open, actually, they show a very good opening rate that is uh, probably uh, almost. Almost double than what I projected initially. One more time. Say that one more time. <laughs> so initially, uh, when we signed this project, right, 20, 
2019 ya 20, uh, we we give a projection to Anton and Bu Valencia or what kind of freight you can fetch here okay but now after the covid then suddenly a couple of uh, projects open uh, like uh, not not a necessary hotel can be apartment but per room they can sell like very high prices and that can be like almost double what i initially proposed for the projection wow very good. so you're speaking now to somebody who represents all of the investors right. that's really good news for us really goodness you can check uh, very easy you can check all the the travel uh, i mean you can easily check in in the ota of the hotels and apartment project nearby and you can see the rates that are fetching is uh it's amazing it's good yeah. this the, the, this has surprised you or is this just a happy coincidence is uh surprise and happy coincidence yeah yeah <laughs> exactly exactly it's two for one right <laughs> for one, yeah. for one. so uh, again again the the investment opportunity for for our um investors for our clients our entire mantra is we will show you the very best on the island I get developers every day coming through to me. And when I, when I met with Pakanthon and Bali Re International team, I realized I was dealing with an elite developer mm. with a very elite vision. Yeah. And also the means to finish it. Yes. And the relationship with you as a business partner and, mm. and, and the whole Tui group. I'm very proud to bring this and the villas especially to the uh or to the international investors Definitely. and now you're saying that your initial projections for nightly room rates could possibly even double could possibly even double yeah which was my projections <laughs> and wasn't my necessarily projections to start off with but that's we like to stay conservative when it comes to our nightly room rate projection and, and I, uh, I i conferred with you i said these are my numbers mm. tell me your numbers and we were within maybe fifty dollars a night. Yeah. All right. I, I, but now you're saying that those could possibly double, especially in different times of the of the year, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Definitely. So I, I'm happy to hear that it doesn't surprise me as much as I'm just happy that now that you're seeing what's going on here a little bit more, and and will we be seeing more of you here once it's opened, or is that your job done then? Uh, no, we are we're actively developing actually. Yeah. Uh, Bali, obviously, one of the main priority in Indonesia because we already have the market here. Yeah. That's so it's the, it's the first, the one, and the only Tui Blue. Uh, for now, yes. For now. For now, yes. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we also develop in other uh, destinations in Indonesia. But yeah. Obviously, Bali is the one that we already have the market. It's very easy. Very easy. Uh, very straightforward. Where have you been all this time? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean that. So if for us, it's always been logical. We've we, we've lived here for quite some time, and we're very happy to invite you, the Tui Blue Group, Thanks. the Tui Group, uh, back every time, and, and uh, keep telling me more about these numbers next time, okay? Because hopefully they double again. <laughs> we are seeing an incredible uh, uptake, a high occupancy, a very very shrewd and experienced team that dynamically builds. The nightly room rates, um, according to demand, mm. and according to a year in advance booking. So, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Every time I meet you, I I learn more about the project. I learn more about just how great it is to be in business with you. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Mark. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, so, guys, really hope you uh, are able to consume all of that. It's very interesting for our for our investors. Um, we have a very big standard, a very high standard here at uh, Geonet Properties and Finance Group. We we deal with elite, elite builders and elite property managers, as you can possibly see here as well. Please like and subscribe. I want to send you more and more information. We constantly put out content and uh, we'll bring you more and more updates from the Luke and how this relationship flourishes. And then obviously the ROI that you guys can expect because it looks like the projected earnings just went up. <laughs> Thanks, Fola. Thank you.